If you've ever sent a message in a bottle out to sea, it's safe to assume you'd never see it again, let alone hear from the person who found your note. That is, until our next guest finds it. Clint Buffington calls himself the message in a bottle hunter, and he's made a hobby of connecting people all over the world with their bottled notes, making some pretty incredible discoveries along the way. He joins us now from Salt Lake City, Utah. Clint, thank you so much for being here. Hey, thanks for having me. All right, so before we get to so this is a hobby of yours, so just let's get this out of the way. What do you do when, this, when you're not doing this? Oh, well, it depends on the day. Um, I've been teaching uh, college English for a long time, but uh, for this past year, I've mainly just been like a freelance uh, technical editor and a musician. All right, so this is your hobby. I've never met anybody with a hobby like this before. What makes you want to do this, to seek people out behind bottled messages? Yeah, it's going to sound really corny, um, <laughs> but I want to bring a little magic into the world, honestly. I think that we have plenty of, uh, plenty of hardship and, um, well, nonsense, for lack of a better word, to deal with on a daily basis, and I feel like this is a way to push back on that a little bit, for me at least. Um, take me through your process. How do you find the bottles? How do you do your research? How do you connect people? Yeah, so the finding of the bottles was really started by t totally by accident, and um, I guess it kind of remains that way. <laughs> I just I just walk a lot on beaches. You know, a lot of people go to the beach and they just they just chill out, which is cool. I like to do that too. But uh, if you want to find messages in bottles, you got to put in some serious miles. So once I do that, and if I'm really lucky, I'll I'll find I'll find one, and then uh, there's a little bit of detective work that goes into tracking down the people because. You know, these things, just by the nature of what they are, they're floating around out there for years. And so people move, they change their names, they, you know, if the Internet is invented. <laughs> <laughs> things things happen that sort of change the game as far as looking for folks. But if all goes well, I'll eventually contact them. And um, most people are really receptive and, you know, and, uh, and like me, kind of want to strike up a friendship. So I've been really lucky in that way. So not only do you track down these senders, but sometimes you even fly out to meet them in person? Because we've got some photos of you with the people you've tracked down. Talk to me about some of the relationships that you've developed because of these reunions. Yeah, yeah. Well, and the traveling to, to meet people thing is, um, it's, it's a little bit, unfortunately, it's a little more rare of a thing that I would like because it's very expensive and they don't uh, exactly pay teachers a whole lot down here in the States. So uh, anyway, once I, once I connect with them, yeah, I usually try to make plans to, to meet people in person. And, uh, you know, so it, it's been anything from, like, the first first people I ever met was a, was a couple who sent a message in a bottle on their first wedding anniversary. And it was, a, it was an interesting bottle because I opened it and it smelled just so awful I can't even describe it. But when I read the, the letter, I realized that the reason for that is that it was their first wedding anniversary. They'd saved a piece of their wedding cake and they sent that in the bottle with the note. I was like, I've got to meet these people. Anyone like whimsical enough to put cake in a bottle and, you know, send that out to see, I've just, I've got to meet them. So I went out to uh, to Washington D.C. and met this couple named uh, Ed and Carol, and uh, yeah, then you know uh, circumstances just called me back to D.C. for a conference. Later, we've we've hung out a few times, and they eventually actually came to my wedding last year. So I, I know it seems kind of <laughs> flippant to most people probably, but these relationships are really meaningful to me. These are like real friends to me. Now. That, that's a wonderful story. But talk to me about sort of there's, there's some there's some unique situations where some of the bottles that you find are so old that the senders have passed away. But you say that that has resulted in some of the most meaningful connections with their loved ones. What has it meant to you or to them when they find out that you found letters from people that they love who have since passed? Well, yeah, I mean, I think we all know that, that, that sense of loss and devastation anytime we lose someone close to us. And of course, we never expect to hear from them again. So, I mean, you can just imagine what it would be like if someone were to call you up and say, hey, I've got this letter from this this person that you loved and lost and I mean so it, it's a very unique position I feel very lucky to be in uh, to have this kind of strange hobby where where I get to deliver you know final letters from people to their often to their kids or to their surviving family members um, it's just totally humbling every time and it, and it means the world to them of course because it's like one last chance to connect with someone that's gone forever now uh, Clint, before we let you go, uh, we want to help some uh, help you on your way. You're you're looking to track down senders behind some Canadian messages. How's that going? Oh yeah, well, it's a little a little on the slow side actually. <laughs> well, maybe we can There's help a, you here. Yeah, yeah, that would be great. Well, I'm currently trying to help uh, someone who found a message in a bottle. Uh, she herself, I think, is from uh, BC, and she's looking for uh, the boy who sent it, uh, who I think is from Richmond. 
Um, and his name is Andrew Smith, so we're hoping to hoping to, to track him down and, and put them in touch because he wrote a really sweet and uh, interesting message in a bottle, including a drawing of a pirate ship. So um, we'd like to find him. And then uh, there's a, there's another one that I'll have to circle back with you on because uh, I'm helping my dad solve a message in a bottle that he found, which is a whole different story. <laughs> but it's from a, it looks to be from a, a kid who is in high school in Nova Scotia in the 1980s. Wow. So this this person would be probably in their 50s today. Clint, you know, you absolutely are bringing uh, magic back into the world, and I can say that with authority because I'm on TV. Uh, and it's not <laughs> lost on me, the irony that you are from a landlocked state, my friend, but thank you very much for being here today. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. This is great.